Hi, and welcome back to Hardware Unboxed. I'm your host, Matt, and today we'll be doing an ultimate comparison of the GTX 960 and the R9 380 to see which is the best sub $200 GPU. As exciting as the GeForce GTX 980 Ti and Radeon R9 Fury X are, the sub $200 GPU market is where the real battles take place. Let's be honest, around $200 has always bought you a GPU with plenty of power and today things are no different. The GTX 960 and R9 380 offer plenty of rendering power and are more than sufficient for 1080p gaming which is the most popular resolution for gamers. If you jump on any computer forum and ask the question, which should I buy, the GeForce GTX 960 or the Radeon R9 380, you're bound to get varying opinions coming your way at a great knot of speed as both have their strengths and weaknesses. The GeForce GTX 960 is hands down the more efficient GPU, consuming anywhere from 20 to 40% less power. This typically means that the 960 will also run a little cooler, though overclockers can expect to extract around 20% more frequency from each GPU's core. The Radeon R9 380, on the other hand, should be a little faster, which will help offset that extra power consumption. Testing with just a few select games doesn't really give you the full picture, so for this head-to-head -head battle, we've selected 22 of the latest and most popular graphically intense games to run the 960 and 380 through. Testing takes place at 1080p as well as the more desirable 2560 by 1440 resolution. On top of that, we'll be testing each game with two different quality settings. For example, Battlefield 4 was tested using the maximum in-game quality settings with 2 times multi-sample anti-aliasing enabled and then again with AA disabled completely. The Witcher 3 has been tested with hairworks enabled and then disabled, while Tomb Raider was tested with and without Tress FX. Both GPUs were tested using a Core i5 6600K processor under a fresh install of Windows 10 with the latest drivers installed. All of that being said, let's jump into the benchmarks. In Metro Redux, the 960 enjoyed an 8 frame per second advantage at 1080p with tessellation set to very high. With tessellation disabled, it's the 380 that's faster by 5 frames per second, though both GPUs exceeded 60 frames per second on average. In Tomb Raider, with Tress FX enabled, the 380 has an obvious advantage and we see it rendering 18 frames per second more than the 960 at 1080p. Disabling Tress FX reduces the performance margin significantly and now the 380 is just 5 frames per second faster with both GPUs rendering over 70 frames per second on average at 1080p. Battlefield 4 is a close fight, though the 380 is able to take the lead, beating the 960 by 4 FPS at 1080p with MSAA enabled. Turning off anti-aliasing boosts the 960 to an average of 70 frames per second, though the 380 was slightly faster with 73 frames per second. The 380 was significantly faster in Thief, delivering 9 frames per second more at 1080p with super sampling anti-aliasing enabled. Disabling SSAA reduced the deficit to just 4 frames per second, and both GPUs rendered over 70 frames per second on average. Just 3 frames per second favoured the 380 at 1080p in Watch Dogs, with HBAO Plus set to high. As expected, with HBAO completely disabled, the 380 pulled further ahead of the 960, increasing the margin out to 8 frames per second. Testing Hitman Absolution with FXAA, we see that the 380 is significantly faster than the 960, producing an extra 14 frames per second. The exact same 14 frame per second margin can be seen when testing with 2 times MSAA, as the Radeon R9 380 proves it's the best option for Hitman. The GTA 5 performance is extremely competitive. At 1080p, the 380 was just a single frame faster than the 960. Similar margins were seen when reducing the quality settings to high, though both were very smooth. Neither GPU had any trouble delivering highly playable performance in Civilization Beyond Earth, delivering over 70 frames per second on average, Still, the 380 was 4 frames per second faster. Disabling anti-aliasing boosted performance slightly and extended the 380's lead out to 6 frames per second. Using the highest possible in-game quality settings with MLAA enabled, the frame rates using these mid-range graphics cards are very low. Still, the 380 was 2 frames per second faster at 1080p. Lowering the quality settings to the Ultra preset with MLAA enabled, we see that performance improves drastically and now the 960 is 5 frames per second faster than the 380. The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt results are surprising as the 380 is faster than the 960 with hairworks enabled, 5 frames per second faster in fact. 
The latest version of The Witcher 3 has improved Hairworks performance and AMD has obviously made great strides with their drivers as well. Turning off Hairworks actually reduced the margin to just 4 frames per second, still favouring the 380. The 960 didn't enjoy Middle Earth Shadow of Mordor with an average of just 39 frames per second, making it 15 frames per second slower than the 380. Reducing the quality settings from ultra to high didn't really help out the 960 much, at least in terms of catching the 380. The 960 is now 17 frames per second slower than the 380. Assassin's Creed Unity is another game where AMD dominates, as the 380 averaged 19 frames per second more than the 960 at 1080p using percentage closer soft shadows and screen space ambient occlusion. Testing again with PCSS and SSAO disabled, we see that the 380 is now just 9 frames per second faster than the 960. Using sub-pixel morphological anti-aliasing, the 960 averaged 36 frames per second at 1080p in Crisis 3, while the 380 was 5 frames per second faster with 41 frames per second. Changing to fast approximate anti-aliasing allowed for quite a lot of extra performance from these GPUs, and the 380 was now just 3 frames per second faster than the 960. Testing Dragon Age Inquisition with 2 by MSAA enabled, the 380 was found to be 5 frames per second faster than the 960 with 50 frames per second on average. Disabling AA and changing from HBAO to SSAO saw similar margins as the 380 was faster by 4 frames per second. First up we tested Armour 3 using FXAA and this gave the 380 a 4 frame per second advantage with 53 frames per second on average. Disabling all forms of AA didn't change the performance margin as the 380 was still 4 frames per second faster than the 960. In Grid Autosport, even with 4 times MSAA enabled, both GPUs easily cracked 60 frames per second at 1080p, though the 380 was 5 frames per second faster. Dropping MSAA for CMAA boosts performance further, though this time it is the 960 that's faster, winning by 4 frames per second. In F1 2015, the 960 delivered a rare victory over the 380, though we should point out that it was just a mere 1 frame faster. Turning SMAA and TAA off didn't change the performance trends really, as both GPUs delivered the exact same performance with 74 frames per second each. The 380 was 3 frames per second faster than the 960 in Far Cry 4 at 1080p with an average of 35 frames per second using HBAO and 2 times MSAA. Testing with SSBC and SMAA, we again found that the 380 is 3 frames per second faster than the 960. Dying Light is another game that provides a rare win for the 960 as it was 4 frames per second faster than the 380 at 1080p. Turning off anti-aliasing, depth of field and horizon based ambient occlusion helped the GTX 960 extend its lead over the 380 to 6 frames per second. The 380 averaged 49 frames per second in Sleeping Dogs at 1080p, making it 6 frames per second faster than the 960. Reducing the FXAA level and disabling SSAA, the frame rates increased significantly to over 100 frames per second. The 960 was still 5 frames per second slower than the 380, though at these frame rates the difference will certainly go unnoticed. As expected, the GeForce GTX 960 was faster in Project Cars, and this game is a bit of a sore point for AMD. Still, with 53 frames per second, the 960 was just 4 frames per second faster than the 380. Disabling MSAA and changing from SMAA to FXAA greatly improves performance of both GPUs, though the 960 is now 7 frames per second faster. The Radeon R9 380 averaged 62 frames per second in Call of Duty Advanced Warfare at 1080p, making it 3 frames per second slower than the 960. Changing SMAA for FXAA as well as disabling SSAA, we see that both GPUs deliver considerably better performance. The 960 was just 4 frames per second faster than the 380, though again with well over 100 frames per second on average, this difference would go unnoticed. For years now, AMD has consistently provided the best value mainstream graphics cards, and this is again the case when comparing the R9 380 to the GTX 960. For those not concerned with power consumption, and let's be honest, when it comes to mid-range graphics cards, consumption isn't really a big issue, the Radeon R9 380 is the obvious choice. AMD drivers didn't appear to throw up any issues either with consistent performance in all titles. In fact, with 22 games tested, the R9 380 was faster in over 80% of them. On average, the GTX 960 was 6% slower than the R9 380 when looking at the 44 results recorded by each GPU at 1080p using the two different test settings. Breaking those results down, we find that when using the more demanding quality settings, the GTX 960 was an average 9% slower for an average of 49 frames per second as opposed to 54 frames per second from the R9 380. 
The less demanding quality settings saw the GTX 960 trail by just a 4% margin with an average of 67 frames per second opposed to 70 frames per second for the R9 380. So while the Radeon R9 380 is clearly a faster choice, GTX 960 users don't have much to worry about as the margins aren't noticeable in most games. Three months ago we selected the GTX 960 for our entry level gaming PC build as it was the best value option at the time, though today we would substitute it for the punchier Radeon R9 380. Well I hope that settles the $200 mainstream GPU battle for now, I'd love to hear what you guys think in the comments. This has been Matt for Hardware Unboxed, don't forget to hit like, hit subscribe and we'll see you next time. Yeah.